The Great Indian Naval Mutiny was the first time since 1857 that a sizable section of the Indian Armed Forces revolted, turning their guns on the British. This was one of the defining moments in the saga of India's freedom struggle. That, in many ways, was the last nail in the coffin of the British colonial rule in India. The revolt that started from the docks of Bombay in 1946 spread like wildfire from Karachi to Calcutta. Ten thousand sailors deployed on 60 naval ships took up the fight, filling the skies with the slogans Quit India and Jai Hind. World War II caused the rapid expansion of Royal Indian Navy and by 1945, it was 10 times larger than what it was in 1939. When the war ended, the British troops were given medals and recommendations. But in contrast, the Indian troops faced unemployment apart from being treated like animals. Their pent-up anger exploded when on January 16, 1946, stale lentils and raw rotis were put in front of hungry naval ratings at the port of Bombay in the name of rations. Complaining about such issues would elicit answers like, beggars can't be choosers. The British officers thought that India would remain their slave, but they probably did not understand the history of this soil properly. This is a country of brave hearts like Maharana Pratap. This is also the country of Porus, who stood defiant before Alexander's powerful army. There is magic in the soil of this country. And that very self-respect was being insulted repeatedly by the British officers. At the same time, the brave exploits of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's Azad Hind Forge in Burma begin to trickle in. Balai Chand Dutt, a wireless telegraph operator in the Royal Indian Navy, was stationed at the warship HMIS Talwar, which was docked at Bombay port. Dutt had heard heroic stories of INA soldiers in Burma from his friend Salil Sham. Sham had returned from Malaya and had come in direct contact with the men from INA. Dutt would often invite his fellow Marines over tea to the canteen of Talwar and prepare them for an armed conflict. On February 2nd, 1946, Dutt's efforts started to fructify. The Commander-in-Chief of the Navy was scheduled to visit HMIS Talwar. B.C. Dutt and his colleagues scrawled Quit India and Jai Hind on the platform from where the Commander-in-Chief was about to take the salute. The gum bottle served as a clue which set the officers on prowl. Eventually, Dutt was arrested. On February 18, 1946, MS Khan took over the command of revolt on HMIS Talwar. At the same time, an uprising started at HMIS Hindustan in Karachi. Rebel soldiers with HMIS Talwar started sending out radio messages across the country, making it the epicenter of the revolt. Soon, many more Navy soldiers joined the rebellion.
the fire of this rebellion was spinning rapidly out of control. The rebels started gathering near the gateway of India. From the Taj Hotel to the Yacht Club, the public joined the rebels. The British administrators ordered the police to open fire on the rebel soldiers. But they refused. The scale of protests, slogans and demonstrations across the country, from Bombay to Calcutta, shook the British administration. Rumours spread that the British officers were planning to starve the rebels to bring them to their knees. But the public came out of their homes and reached the gateway of India with fruits, grains and other eatables. Shopkeepers opened the doors of their shops for the soldiers so they could take whatever they wanted for free. The British government of Clement Attlee was in shock. Admiral J.H. Godfrey, the officer in command of the Royal Indian Navy, was ordered to stop the rebellion. The Admiral's stern warning was issued to the rebels. On the third day of the rebellion, Royal Air Force bomber fighter planes started hovering in the sky over the Bombay Harbour. On the other hand, in Karachi, a shootout started between rebels on HMIS Hindustan and the British forces. Rebel soldiers kept fighting until their bullets ran out. And eventually, the British recaptured HMIS Hindustan. On the fourth day of the mutiny, the British government promised to accept the demands of the mutinous naval ratings. Demands ranging from quality of food to an increase in pay were accepted. At the same time, the government also promised to consider the demands of releasing INA prisoners of war. This rebellion, which lasted only for four days, had shaken the very roots of British rule. The British had come to realize that now they could not keep India away from its freedom for long. The last statement issued by the strike committee was, our strike has been a historic event in the life of the nation. It was for the first time that the blood of men in the services and those in the streets were seen flowing together for a common cause. We, in the services, will never forget this. Jai Hind! The country salutes the resoluteness of these fighters. The immortal words of freedom fighter and martyr Bismil captures this golden episode of Indian freedom struggle aptly. Sar Faroshi ki tamanna ab hamare dil mein hai. देखना है जोर कितना बाजुए कातिल में है